The following is a presentation of AOW Productions. This program contains adult content. Listener discretion is advised. The views and opinions expressed by the host of this program do not necessarily stand or reflect those of this station or its management. Introducing Chris Master, Mr. Freeze, and Bad Billy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Outlaw Radio. And that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> all right. Welcome to Outlaw Radio, this very special edition on this very, you can call it a late Sunday night, wherever you are, or very early Monday morning here in the States. Of course, if you're listening in uh, South Africa, it's uh, it's definitely morning, but it's not quite as early as, as we are Anyway, I am joined, of course, by Mr. Freeze, and of course, I am your host, Bad Billy. What's going on, bud? What's up, buddy? All right. Oh, my God, I get an echo back in my ear. I don't like my voice. <laughs> oh, well, get used to it. <laughs> All right, so we're up uh, doing a broadcast at this time because we do have a debate coming up with uh, South African historian Brian Ebden. And with that said, I will cue it. I hope you got your shit and pants on. Because you are about to shit your pants. It's time for the Outlaw Radio Debate. Start this off by first... Uh, Letting you introduce yourself and uh, go ahead and uh, speak a, a little bit of uh, some facts we're going to get into before uh, we really get into it. Cool. Okay, uh, buddy, thank you very much. And to whoever's listening and or watching this podcast, a very, uh, very warm welcome. Uh, my name is Brian Ebden. I am from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, over the years, I've traveled. I've traveled all over the world. I one of one of the jobs I was involved in was raising money for the African National Congress. So I lived extensively in America, in uh, in Europe, and some places in Asia. Um, I probably about 18 and a half years ago, I started having an interest in who I am, where do I come from, because there was no history of my people being a so-called quote-unquote colored person uh, living in South Africa. Uh, not knowing where I came from. So I started uh, trying to understand who I was in the big scheme of things. And then studying studying African history, well, studying uh, Khoi Khoi history or Southern, Southern African history, of course, they, they, you know, that's a micro, that's a micro, micro position. So the more you, more you understand things, the more you have to understand it in a macro, in a macro position. And that's what got me into, into um, studying ancient African history. And so I've been just learning, learning, uh, researching for the past 18 years. So that's my, that's my personal interest. My business, the, my profession, I'm a, a political communication specialist. All right. And, of course, uh, here on Outlaw Radio, I will uh, rehash a couple of things here, especially those who are on Viewing on iVlog TV, well, there's only one right now. Nobody's in the chat room as of yet. But um, first off, uh, 
where this is a no-holds-barred, uncensored show where we say what the fuck we want. Uh, that does exclude any racial remarks. Racism of any kind will not be tolerated. If you were caught in the chat rooms uh, using racial remarks, you will be banned. This w Again, this will not be tolerated. All right. So, first... First off, uh, I've been, Brian, I've been watching your videos. Uh, basically, uh, you're you're really uh, calling out Villain Petzer and, uh, well, him the most, I'd have to say. Uh, for, uh, after Forum comes in a very close second, that being Ernst Roots. But uh, your perception on the Dutch community, particularly the Afrikaners, uh, Go ahead and and uh, give your view on that uh, as as far as from what you say in your videos the the Afrikaners were the ones that stirred up all the shit if I'm not mistaken. Well, the thing is the thing is one has to look at who the Afrikaners were per se. Who were they? What were they? And what did they do in the in in the context of. Uh, uh, of South Africa going going back to 16, post-1652. The problem we have over the last 25 years, it's 25 years, has been that the Africana community, particularly around their history, have been trying to paint out of their history, out of history, what they did. Now, I'm not a judgmental person. I think if people understand contextually what I'm talking about, I'm not pointing a finger at Afrikaners, I'm pointing a finger at white folk, I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. I'm saying, look, we have a particular history in South Africa. We as adults need to deal with our history. And if we don't deal with our history, we'll be, we'll be doomed to repeat it. And so my job is, and, and let, let me say this straight off the bat, uh, Billy, I'm not joined to the hip by Khoi history, by African history, by whatever history it is. I'm joining to the heap of what the truth is. Look, I'm, I'm primarily, I'm a Khoi, Khoi San activist, primarily. However, I have constantly gone against the, the mainstream of Khoi San, Khoi San uh, activism because I'm, I'm focused on what is our history, irrespective of what it is, irrespective of what it is. You know, you can't, you, you can't have a particular history and because you, your, political, uh, your political attitude or your political leanings and directions is contrary to, to what happened. It doesn't make sense to me. So I am more interested. What is our history? Can we take ownership of our history and move forward? However, on the flip side of this, Afrikaners, and for obvious reasons, because of guilt, largely. They know exactly what they need. They know exactly what they need. I'm probably one of the only people that is exposing this. And I'm not exposing this because they're Afrikaners. It is in spite of them being Afrikaners. Well, see, where you I... You understand that? I, under, I understand what you're saying perfectly, yes. It's, it's just that uh, I don't know if you are aware. I mean, and you can't tell by looking at me. Uh, but uh, I myself, I am... No, of course, I, I'm white, of uh, German and uh, Scottish descent, but also on my mother's side, I'm of Cheyenne descent, because she was born and raised in Montana, USA, and, uh, you know, and so therefore some of my ancestors on that side suffered one of the greatest genocides ever recorded in the world. I'd have to say even worse than what what is that of the uh, of of the Third Reich, the the Nazi regime, what Hitler did in Germany, and not just Germany, throughout Europe. It was child's play. It was child's play. Com yeah, it was compared. It was child's play compared. It was child's play compared to the to the the American quote unquote Indian um, uh, in, in uh, Holocaust in Turtle Island. Of course, I yes. agree. Yes. The thing, the thing is, when I when I've studied Native American history, uh, the biggest problems the Native Americans have had were with the British or the Spanish. I mean, and so for look at the two major languages spoken in this country, 
I mean, mm -hmm. you've got, of course, Mexico, Puerto Rico, uh, Cuba, all sp Spanish-speaking areas going as far down as um, South America, all all Spanish, mo or m predominantly Spanish-speaking. Uh, Typical Brazil, of course. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've, I often wondered that myself, too, is uh, take Mexico in particular, for example. Why is the native language Spanish there when they're thousands of miles, and I mean thousands of miles away from Spain? So I took a great look at that, and, I, and what I found out was Hernan Cortez came over from Spain. He um, enslaved the Aztecs and the Mayans killed all the great warriors that he could for their gold and what other, other riches they had, forbid them to speak their native tongue, and forced them to learn Spanish, so therefore you have the Spanish-speaking nations. Now, see, what I have, where I have to highly disagree with you is uh, how you speak of the Dutch is because, um, looking at my own history here, the Native Americans have never had a problem with the Dutch. The Native Americans have spoken very highly of the Dutch and said that they're the fairest traders there were. The, um, you know, and the same too, the first war that was ever fought, the first official war that was ever fought in this country, being the French and Indian War, the French fought side by side with the Native Americans against the British. The British came over here, stirred up a bunch of shit, and tried to impose their ways and their laws. The Dutch, on the other hand, like I said, are regarded as the fairest that have come, come across this land. And uh, you look at uh, a group of people today in uh, parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, a group of people I'm sure you've heard of called the Amish, who are Dutch descendants. They, of course, uh, want to live the old ways, no electricity, very few modern conveniences. And they take pride in building things from the ground up with uh, no history of slavery or anything like that. And the Dutch, of course, going back to Holland, and I look at this, I look at this, they, they don't uh, believe in having slaves. They, they believe in building from the ground up with your own two hands because slavery is the lazy man's way of getting things done. Of course, that's shamefully how America came, became to be one of the greatest economies in the world. But, uh, you, you know, and so therefore, I, it's like you, you know, it's tough to point a finger at any, anybody. But if I have to point a finger at somebody, it's got to be the British and it's got to be the Spanish. The Dutch are just, uh, you know, it's, it's re regarded as the fairest. Okay, can I, can I respond to that? Yeah. I think, um, I think you, you've got to be fair in the sense that... Um, I asked the question, who are the Afrikaners? If, if, you, if, you, if you dial back to what I asked, I asked the question, I said, who were the Afrikaners? The Afrikaners weren't predominantly Dutch. They were a mixed match of a whole bunch of folk. Okay, so they were, they were English. If, if you recall, in, 70, in 1779, the English imposed on, in the Zeerfeld and moved, moved the, the entire Klosa, Klosa clan uh, tribe moved them 253 kilometers east to accommodate 5,000 English families. And within the Dutch, within the, well, what we refer to today as Afrikaners, there were a whole bunch of, they were a mixed match of a whole lot of people, which includes German, German, uh, uh, Flemish, uh, um, English, of course, French, so there's a whole lot of them. So the Afrikaner, to claim that they are Dutch, they part Dutch, yes. Of course they part Dutch. Nobody's going to deny that. And were the Dutch fair? Hmm, well, uh, our history books paints the same picture that you, you, you portraying, that the Dutch were relatively fair. Willem himself tries to say that the Dutch never enslaved anybody. Of course the Dutch never enslaved anybody. But we've got, you see, you see, you see, Billy, this is, let me tell you what flies in the face of what you say. Jan van Riebeek was a motherfucker. Jan van Riebeek was given the choice. Are you there, Billy? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm listening. 
Jan van Riebeek was given the choice. Yes, we either rescue, because Jan van Riebeek, being a Dutchman, was a pedophile and a thief. And he was caught in Batavia, which is, uh, which is uh, Malaysia, and was sent back. He was a, he was a governor in, in, in Batavia. He was sent back in disgrace to back to Holland. So they gave him a choice. We either rescue your ass, or we put you, or, or you go and open up our halfway station in Cape Town. And he chose the latter, of course. Nobody wants to be arrested in, the, in those days. So Jan van Riebeek himself, as an individual, was, was, a, was a piece of shit. Right, so, was it a Dutch issue? Probably not. But the thing is, this is what we do have. And this is what you have. This is what we all have access to. I have read Jan van Riebeek's uh, diary back to back, cover to cover, a few times. This guy was a piece of shit. He would try and steal Koi Koi land. He would try and cheat. He just, uh, uh, on, on, a, on, a, on, on a whim, went to war in 1654 against Doman and the Khoring Aitona, stole a huge tract of land and just told him, fuck you, this is mine now. So this is what, what uh, Ernst Roots talks about, conquest of land. Now, you can't, you see, you see the one thing, the one thing Happy Forum misses is of the, uh, they claim that land was, was acquired by Afrikaners in three ways. One, by barter arrangement slash purchase. Number two, through conquest. And number, through, number three, through terren analias, which is empty land. In other words, they occupied empty land. The notion of empty land is bullshit anyway. But... Let's look at conquest. There was no conquest. Do you understand the context of what I'm saying? I understand what you're there saying. There was no conquest. There yes. was no conquest in South Africa. Do you know why? We are still there, Earth's roots. You didn't conquest. You didn't, co you didn't conquer us. You conquered us. Use, he, he's got to use the correct language. They conquered us. We reconquered it. We took, we are now, we are in the majority in South Africa. So they didn't, there was no conquest. They, they temporarily con conquered us. We're taking our shit back. That's what they, well, that's what they can't get into, fixed skulls of theirs. You can't tell me that land was, was, was appropriated through conquest. We are reconquering, we, we are reconquering it. We are taking our shit back because, hey, we still exist. We've not been, we've not been pushed to the, to, to the sidelines of history. We're not a conquered people. We were conquered. We are now reconquering it. So if we're entitled to our land because the fact of the matter is that we're still there and we're the majority. They didn't wipe us out. They didn't do what, what, what happened in, in America to your ancestors. By the way, believe I may even made that grace. I don't, I don't know whether you're a spiritual person or not, but I was Cheyenne, believe it or not. And I was killed in a battle many, many, many years ago, shot in the left shoulder uh, while I was sitting on a horse. So uh, the first place, one of the first places I went to was the Cheyenne uh, Reserve in, in Colorado Springs. But anyway, that's besides the point moving forward. So, the whole notion of what AFIFORUM puts forward, of conquest of land, is a non-starter. Do you, do you understand where I'm coming from? Well, the, of course, the whole issue of conquest, I think, has happened everywhere, you know, and um, I, I don't think there's, there's a country in the world that hasn't been conquered by Somebody I understand some, that. In some so form. I, I, I'm with you. Look, why does Native Americans not claim their land back? Why can't they, land, claim, they claim their land back? Because they were thoroughly conquered. They were thoroughly conquered, rightly or wrongly. I'm not dealing with, with uh, the moral issues around it. I'm dealing with the post-conquer. Post, uh, uh, okay? Yes, I agree with Ernst Roots and, and, and Afri Forum that they, they appropriate land through conquering. We're just taking our shit back. Sorry, you know, boo, cry little, little bitch tears. We're not interested. They conquered our land through violent means. The history is clear. There are many accounts of what they did. And the issue of the Afrikaners trying to say they were nice people, they weren't nice people. I'm sorry to say that, Billy. I'm sorry to burst the bubble. We know what they did. The, the records are clear. The English in particular, there was a big fight between the English and the Afrikaners. Yes. And the Afrikaners engaged in the great, in the great trek. Because of the English, because the English uh, uh, um, 
stop, stop, stop slavery. That is why they were pissed off because they want to maintain, they want to maintain the status quo between the conquered, who they conquered, because they know they did the dirty work. The English didn't do the dirty work. The in, look, the English, you know what the English were, were interested in, 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 in South Africa? They were interested in simple things like diamonds, like gold. So let me, let me, let me uh, just blow your hair back with this. What hair? I'm bald. I'm bald you like bald? you. Yeah, I'm bald like you, so. <laughs> okay, no problem. I'm the, I'm the bald, I shave my hair. But that's, that's all good. So, so let, let me share this with you. And I, so you can get, perhaps get a big picture. After Fulham, we always talk about the land. And if you look at this little, this little video that, uh, that uh, Willem, Willem uh, Lichbeck uh, Petter did the other day about the truth about the land, where he says, you know, the land is all on the east, on the west coast, you know, down by the coast, where it's fertile, and that land was given back to, to Africans, to Af different, uh, different black South Africans. That's okay. But, you know, they, they, kept, the the, they kept the Northern Cape. And more than $57 trillion worth of diamonds came from that motherfucker. Let me, let, let me tell you, here's something for you. Are you sitting down, Billy? I am. I am, yeah. Okay. Take a shot of whiskey because you're going to need a shot of whiskey for this. One fucking mine, one fucking mine in Western Deep Levels in Johannesburg produced 50%, 50 percent, five zero percent. 50%, half of all the fucking gold on planet Earth. Get the fuck out of here. 50% of every piece of gold on, above ground on planet Earth came from one mine in Johannesburg. That was, was stolen violently from the Papedi. We know the history. I can read to you. I would like to read this to you. Let's talk about the Afrikaners. Can I read this to you? Yeah, go ahead. I want to read my this. Be my guest. Uh, let, let me find this. Let me find this just quickly. So that we can uh, just put Mr. Roots and 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 Volympis, um, just get him on the straight and narrow quickly. Um, I'm just finding it. My apologies. All right. Uh, okay. If I don't find it, if I don't find it, I can paraphrase it for you and I'll send it to you. All right. There's two stories. One is about Bathsheba. The Bathsheba. The Bathsheba. Uh, um, missionary. They had a mission and they had 4,000 Basutu, Basutu people in the mission. The Afrikaners came and said, no, fuck this, we want this land. The, the poor missionaries said, no, but you can't have this land. They told him, fuck you. You know what they did? What? They murdered all 4,000 in one morning. Murdered them. Every man, woman, and child. And it's documented. I've got a document for this, where this person challenged the Dutch government and said reparations must be paid for this. Then there's a cave, a famous cave up in the north, in Mpumalanga. I will give you, I will give you that document as well, well documented. They murdered 3,000 people that were hanging in the cave. They brutally assassinated them all. These people were monsters, were fucking monsters. And listen to this. They claim land in the north, in, in, in the north of, of South Africa. These are the, the, um, the Afrikaners. In spite of them being indigenous people, um, who was a, a portrait leader, waltzes up to, to the, the, um, to the uh, Bapedi king and says to him, oh, uh, we, here's an agreement, they show him an agreement, and they say, oh, we've acquired all of this land from the Swazi king. And they're going like, but well, we don't understand this. How can the Swazi king give you our land? And they said, yeah, well, that's our agreement. They just decided to wipe them all out and proclaim the, proclaim the Transvaal state. Now, let's, let's ask this question, Billy, shall we? Yeah, go ahead. Were they, were they entitled to claim the land in spite of us being there? No, they weren't. And and he, here's the thing too, though, is uh, you make an argument on what uh, I call virgin land, which um, you know if if there's nobody there except for plant and animal life form, what the fuck ever, you know, that is subject okay. to be claimed, and um, and you d I think you have the rights to it. I mean, this day and age, now there's a thing called private property, and somebody 
doesn't matter if nobody's there, somebody owns it now. But uh, mm -hmm. back then, nobody owned yeah, I've got, it. I've got, the, I've got the piece here. I can send it to you if you want. Right. Uh, it's, okay, uh, okay uh, it's fine. Go, go ahead, Billy. Yes. So, I just found it. Go ahead, please. But uh, I've been told in the past that there, there has never been such a thing as uh, virgin land, but that's a bunch of bullshit because there is virgin land today. There, you know, somebody might own it, yeah, but uh, there's nothing there except, or no people there except for plant and animal <laughs> life form. And, and that's, okay. if that's here in America, but that's there in, in I, Africa. I, you, you know something, I've traveled, I've traveled in a lot of places around the world. Two, I'll give you two examples. I drove from Gothenburg to uh, what is the capital of, of Sweden, okay? And for 90% of that drive, I drove through forests. Just drove through forests, 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 as far as I could see. For 90% of that, of, of, that, um, uh, of, of that trip, that was virgin land. Let me tell you something, there was just nothing there, okay? I rode through the Black Forest from uh, Stuttgart to, to Hamburg, through the Black Forest. There was just nothing there. And that forest was exactly the same way it was when the Romans came to fight the, the Germanic tribes. It was exactly the same. And we, here we're talking 2,000 years. So now, what do you mean? You, you understand? There's a question we have to ask. And I appreciate what the question you're asking. And the question you're asking from your perspective is 100% correct. I have no problem with it. But the other question that never gets asked, in the mind of the indigenous, from a conceptual point of view, is that virgin land? Is considered virgin land? You see, the question's never been framed. In fairness, the two questions must go side by side. You can't just say, well, we came here, there, was no, there wasn't shit here, so, oh, by the way, we're just going to fucking claim it. Do you understand my point? So, let me, let me ask you this, though. Have you ever heard of something uh, called a homestead? I don't know if they use that terminology, but uh, that, that's an American terminology that I know. Is that something you've heard of called the homestead? Yeah. Yeah, so basically... Yeah. That, and that's what we have a lot of it, too, that goes on to this day, especially if somebody now, they can't claim property, they have to buy it, they build a house there, or they build a cabin there, whatever they they dwell in. You can put, like an out, outbuilding. Yeah, put, put up a teepee for, a, you know, like my ancestors did. But You see, you see the thing is this, but you, you, you're right, Billy, but I want to roll, roll this back. To the concept, what is the concept? The concept is a Western European concept. They never, that was an imposed concept. Nobody has asked us, has any, asked these Afrikaners, have they actually sat down with us and say, this is what we imply by the homestead, the homestead, uh, 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 do you understand about homestead? This is what we mean about land. It's never, it's been an imposition. They've come there and imposed Roman Dutch law on us without asking us. Now tell me, what is your concept of land? And I, I'll be first, and let me tell you something. I fight against the ANC uh, in terms of ownership of land. I don't believe in private ownership of land. I believe that I'm going back in terms of how my ancestors viewed land, that we as the living occupy the land purely as custodians for the future generations. So there's never, I don't, I disbelieve in private land ownership. So the land must belong to everybody, the indigenous who, who reside there. Okay, so basically if you have one acre that you, you build your house on and you, uh, you, you grow some grass, you grow a garden in the backyard, that's one acre, and one acre is that's one hell of a yard right there, you know. I mean, so I consider that to be private property right there. You build a fence should around I put, it. Should I put a fence me up in one corner? I mean, you see, you see, Billy, let, let me explain this to you. There's a concept of ownership that we're battling with. There's a European concept and there's an African concept. Now, we live in Africa. 
South Africa is part of Africa, has been, and will always be part of Africa, even though the name of the country is just a geographic position. Nobody has asked us, and this includes the ANC. This is why the country is in trouble. I don't blame the Afrikaners. I don't blame them. I don't blame them for fucking around at all. They are fucking around simply because the ANC was too weak to put down something that would say, this is how we're going to build this nation. Putting both sides together and saying, how do we build this nation? So ANC in, them, in themselves fucked it up because they, they imp imposed a whole bunch of stuff on us. Remember, I was an Africanist. I was part of the Black Consciousness Movement of South Africa as a kid in 76. I was an ANC member. Yes, I raised money for the ANC. I raised a shitload of money for the ANC overseas. But we all did that as Africaners, as PAC, as APO. We all came together and said, we will throw our weight behind the ANC to ensure that overwhelmed. It doesn't imply that we agreed with what the ANC's policies were. We just helped them out. You understand where I'm coming from? Okay, so we disagreed with the, the way the ANC went about it. We disagreed with the TRC. We disagreed with what was happening at Codessa. We disagreed with the sunset clauses that the ANC engaged in, particularly with regard to private property. We, di we, we disagreed with the 1913 Land Act, the Land Restitution Act, uh, which, which limited uh, land claims back to 1913. So there's a lot of disagreements. The ANC never spoke to the issues to black people. So what's happening now is the ANC is still trying to act as guardian to their to the silly to their silly uh, to the, to, the, to a lot of their silly policies. So if anybody is to be blamed here, I blame the ANC. I don't blame Afrikaners. You know why? They're just doing what they're doing. They're just doing what they're doing out of survival, and that's okay. I want to get back to a question you asked me a little while ago, and you asked me is uh, why haven't. Uh, the Native Americans taken an uprising to uh, to to take the land back, and uh, part you know your answer is correct. They were they were conquered down. They were the vast majority of this country for for thousands of years, and and then uh, of course along along came the white Europeans and basically uh, made them the minority through genocide. And yeah, correct. So that for for one, the Native Americans are now a minority in this country, so they don't have the power to do that. But right. if they did, if they did, and they were successful at it, it could it could really fuck things up for the rest of the country economically. It would change the world. It would, but it would it would be it would be an economic disaster, and that's that's why they're not even thinking about it doing anything like that because they know even on the reservations it would mess things up really bad. Okay, okay, Billy, I hear you. I don't have a problem with it. This is the this is the problem we have. Okay, we're always dealing with the symptoms of the issue and never dealing with the the the, the, the main cause of the problem. The land must be given back to those indigenous people, irrespective of what the fallout would be. Irrespective. Because those who are currently in possession of that land, as stolen as it is, any well aware of that, of, of that, those people in possession of the land, it's their problem. They must fix it. They're the ones that caused it. Same with the Afrikaners, same with the, with the ANC. But you know what? Just on the subject, if you don't mind, Billy, if you just bear, bear with me, please, sir. You talk about the issue of, 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 of the genocide that occurred, and as horrible as it was, the genocide that occurred in, 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 in America. So I painted a, a macro picture. I said, if you go around the world during a particular time, time slice, you had genocides enacted by white people all over, all over the world. You, do you agree with that? There's, there's got got to be genocide it's uh, i do believe it's happened all over the world somewhere i don't believe it was some was worse than others you know i mean no 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 no, 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 no. We, we're just talking about the action the action of genocide in other words white folk coming in europeans coming in and just wiping out wiping out the the indigenous population so i've asked the question i said if it happened everywhere our neighbors in the north our neighbors to the east our neighbors all over the show bye bye europeans same europeans and if less than 1,000 indigenous Americans came over the land bridge 
of the Bering Strait into America 14 and a half, 15,000 years ago could procreate into 100 million people. We know, we agree, between you and I, yeah. we agree that there were 100 million people wiped out in North America. Yes, there were. And here in Africa, in South Africa, the oldest human beings on Earth with the oldest mitochondrial DNA, which Koyensan, who was occupying in the land, the land space of South Africa. Let's talk just the Western Cape. We know have been there more than 100,000 years. And all of a sudden, you want to tell me that some Dutchman tell me there was only 3,000 motherfuckers there? How about this? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. It is impossible. The history, the found history now, concurs with a massive genocide, the genocide of massive proportions. You cannot tell me, sir, that 1,000 people who came through the Bering Strait could procreate like a bunch of bunny rabbits faster than Africans who've been living in the, south, the southwest of South Africa for 100,000 years. It is impossible. The numbers don't work. What does it prove? That Afrikaners wiped us out, we know, with, with four, four smallpox epidemics. They were busy killing us for hundreds of years. The history is clear. There has been scientific papers done on this, but they suppressed that. All I'm saying is, are we now going to run around and kill Willem Pet, kill uh, 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 Ernst Roots? No. The truth has got to come out and let us, as adults, sit down and fucking deal with it. What is their fucking problem? Why are they trying to suppress it? I understand why they're trying to suppress it, through, through guilty complex. But that's not my problem right now. My issue is, let us get to the truth of what this is. And let us deal as adults with what the fallout should be. I personally believe that the Afrikaners... Hello? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe that the Afrikaners are going about this completely incorrectly. Completely incorrectly. They are, going to be, they are the masters and the architects of their own, of their own demise. They are, indeed. And I'm sorry about it. I can already see where this is headed for. But at the same time, with the way things are going right now, the the murder rate in South Africa is through the roof, and and that's and that's not just white people. This is this is people. Everybody. Everybody's going everybody. through. Everybody. And South Africa is the only country in the world that hasn't had a civil war. Are you aware of that? I know they came close to it, especially before yeah, Mandela came, but I mean, came into power. History, we are the only country that never experienced a civil war. So, look, I have proven that there's a low-impact war against black people in South Africa. But more so, I just want to get, get, may I just flip forward, if you don't mind, please, Billy, I just want to just share this with you. You know, the, the, the Afri Forum, Willem Petzer, all of these cats, do you know of... They, they constantly say they were nice guys, they really didn't do shit, da 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 da, et cetera, et cetera. Do you know anything about Project Coast? No, that is something I have not been made aware of. Okay, I'm going to share, I will mail all of this stuff to you. So I just want to, just for these, these, these fucked up Afrikaners, I want to just share a little, I want to give them a little pilly dilly, right? Here's a little pilly dilly for your ass. Project Coast was a bio, biochemical and biological warfare project which received funding by and the, the head of it is still alive, Constant Yun. The head doctor is still alive, Dr. Votovason. Just go. He's referred to as Dr. Death. But I want to just share this with with with, uh, with African people who claim that they were fucking ace was they they uh, created uh, um, they they started the drug the drug abuse uh, issue in South Africa in the Western Cape in particular with so-called colored people. They, they invented Mandrax there. They built, at one point, this guy was running up with 100,000 Mandrax tablets and gave it away free in the community. And you ask yourself why the fucking drug scourge is what the drug scourge is in the Western Cape. The highest, listen to this, Billy, my people in the Western Cape, very much like American Indians, has got the highest uh, drug abuse rate on planet Earth. The highest, by far. In other words, one out of every two children, children now, are addicted, uh, have a, a, a substance abuse problem. Started by them. Started by Afrikaners. But let me, let me give you something else. That they invented pathogens and emptied this into, into, the, in, into the, water, the water supply of so-called colored people. Okay? Which prohibited, um, in other words, if you had 
tuberculosis or you had asthma, you contracted tuberculosis and asthma, that any medication you take, it would be useless. Right now, right now, Mr. Mr. Roots and Mr. Mr. Petzer, 32% of all the mortalities on planet Earth for asthma and TB is in Western Cape, South Africa, among so-called colored people. I'll roll this number back at you again, 32%. 32%, the highest incident in the world. In other words, India, China, put together, Brazil, put together. Those three monstrous countries have got far less, Indonesia, far less mortalities of tuberculosis. Because you know why? The drugs just don't fucking work. The drugs don't work in the Western Cape. Now, here you've got issues going back hundreds of years into the future. Are they going to fix this? Let's just talk another thing about, about Afrikaners. Do you know anything about the DOP system, Billy? The DOP system? No, that, nobody's brought that to my attention. You see, of course they're not going to bring this to your attention, Billy. You know what they did? They enslaved my people. And when they said, well, we, they're supposed to get paid, now, according to the English. So they said, no, okay, well, we don't have money for you, but here's why. So they enforced alcoholism on my people. And today, the highest rate of our fetal alcohol syndrome, the global average is naught, comma, naught, one, two percent, Billy. But in the Western Cape, among so-called colored people, it is 12.2 fucking percent. 12.2, in other words, 10, uh, out of every 10 people, 1, 2 of those people have got alcohol fetal syndrome. That is a direct result of what Afrikaners did. So they, they must have come and fucking tell me that they're this innocent quiet section. I'll tell them to get the fuck out of Dodge. they got a shitload of stuff to fix. And they're talking about farmers. Do you understand karma? Do you understand karma? This is what they did. They yeah. brute up to today, they br Afrikaner farmers brutalize our people. In fact, the ANC has been having running battles with the farming community in the Western Cape in particular about their abuse of farm workers, about them, them paying farm. If the, in, the, the, the National uh, Labor Law Act says you've got to pay them $10, $10 an hour, uh, these fucking farmers just pay them $2 an hour and say, who gives a fuck? And when it comes to voting time, they say, you will vote DA or we fire you. I mean, they're just fucking monsters. I know about the farmers because, you know, my father built all of the wine farms or he built all of the wine farms for 20 years That's from Stellenbosch all the way through to Tolbach. So I've been on every farm as a kid growing up for 20 years. So I've seen it with my own eyes and the, and, and, and the history is very clear. So there's a lot of things, Billy, they're not sharing with you. There's well, a lot of things that they are keeping away from you. These are facts. I mean, you, I will just say just keywords, just DOP. One word, DOP system. And you will see, you'll be shocked. And this has been going on for hundreds of years. Let's see, something right right there that you said, and I, I can't help but highly disagree. I mean, you say it's karma, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in karma. But, you know, the fact of, we go back to the farm murders right there. The sto mm -hmm. Those stories I've heard, those pictures I've seen, I've talked to a couple of the victims I mean, especially babies being boiled in hot water, uh, you, you know, the... That is uh, the inhuman, race. and it's, it should be condemned, it, it, and condemned with the contempt that it deserves. That's just inhuman. I don't care if you're white, black, or anything in between. No human being deserves that kind of treatment. It is inhuman. And if black people do it, it must be condemned with the contempt that it deserves. Nobody's sitting here and saying that, you, that any human being deserves that kind of treatment. But what I'm saying is what we need. We have a problem in South Africa. And the problem is abject poverty. And the problem is, is that black people are mentally, are mentally hurt. We suffer from tremendous trauma, intergenerational trauma. That's not been dealt with. Do you think Mandela could deal with it? Do you think Mandela was the band-aid? We are very unwell people, Billy. I'm the first person to say that. Black people in South Africa are very unwell people, collectively and individually. We've got the highest rape, 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 rape rate in the world. Why? Nobody's asking why. Van yeah. Petzer will sit there and say, uh, 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 Ronaldo House asked him, are you saying, I quote, are you saying that black people have got a higher propensity for, for criminality, for being criminal, than, than white people? Philippines is <laughs> yes, the, the, the statistics say so. You can't look at the statistics because let's look, let's look at this white boy that, that raped a six-year-old child. 
The yeah. Kingshield Black Child in the Cross. You know about that, right? I do know about that. I forgot his name, but he does need to be dealt with accordingly. If no, per, but, but look at the defense. Look at the defense. People are saying, what was his, what is his psychological condition? His witchcraft, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's the same thing in America. I mean, look, you have all of these white guys who run around killing, killing loads of black folk, okay? Then they look at his psychological profile. That's okay. I don't, I'm not saying, I'm not judging it. I'm just saying, black people in South Africa are unwell as a direct result of 300 years of colonialism. 300 years of murder, torture, of suppression, oppression, arrested development. Black people are unwell. The ANC did nothing to address that unwellness, the state of unwellness. We suffer from intergenerational trauma. Well, here, here's a question. If we're not prepared to, as adults to say, we need to deal with this, it's an issue. And then you turn around and say, Black Land First, uh, BLF is a bunch of, bunch of loonies. BLF is nothing more than a symptom, a symptom of the condition of black people that black people find themselves in, and very unfairly so. Do you think it's fair for black people to love the way they love? I've seen the pictures, and uh, I do not think those are fair conditions. Uh, from I don't know how recent they are, or you know what, you know I can't speak on a whole lot of that stuff because I'm definitely not there. But I do have one question for you, and I'll Just go ahead. Sir. I I have a friend of mine. Uh, she I haven't seen her for years, and she just got in contact with me on Facebook, and she okay. told she told me she had an ex husband, who was highly abusive. Um, he he was addicted to methamphetamines. Forced her to do methamphetamines with her, raped her every chance he could get, and knocked her teeth out when uh, I guess he he didn't make her dinner correctly. Now, one of the the thing is, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, it's not going to matter uh, because he's white." But if if he was black and it was addressed, would how big of a race issue do you think this would be? You see, the thing is, once again, we go to all of the symptoms of the problem, but we're not dealing with the root cause of the problem. And the root cause of the problem is we have to acknowledge that what apartheid did. And you know, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not running around circles. I will, answer, I will speak to your question. But you know, Afriforum talks about apartheid wasn't a crime against humanity. They forget, very. Very unfortunately, they forget that we suffered three, uh, 300 years, 200 and 280 years of some of the worst oppression on the, uh, on the planet of Earth. You can't say, well, apartheid wasn't that bad. Apartheid plus colonialism. They were the guys in charge of colonialism. They just legalized it. They just legalized it in 1948. But the shit's been going on since 1653. Now, you cannot tell me, Billy, that... that Intergenerational trauma has done nothing to these people, has done nothing to me. It took me a very long time. Do you know why I live out of South Africa, Billy? Do you know why I'm living in exile in Nigeria? For two reasons. One, I feel very comfortable around black folk. When I wake up in the morning, I see black folk. When I go do what I do, I see black folk all the time. I'm very comfortable with that. I'm completely comfortable with that. That is where I'm comfortable and happy because I see myself in that. But the second reason is, I cannot wake up every morning and see some, some arrogant uh, Afrikaner prick running around making it that land is his. Uh, and they, they're pretty arrogant about it. You understand? And mistreating uh, people of color. In, in the land of my sister, I would probably murder one of them by now. So it's better, you know, I just remove myself. Uh, I, I recuse myself from that, that, that situation. I'm, I don't want to be an unwell person. Do you get where I'm coming from, Billy? I get what you're... Yeah, who wants to I be sick? I self-recognize that I'm an unwell person based on all of these things. So I have to heal myself. I have to heal myself. It's a process I have to, in, I have to go through. But what about those people in the ghettos? They're fucking monsters, man. That's the reality. They've created, they've created the Frankenstein. And now when the Frankenstein come and bite them, they want to blame the monster. When you create the monster, it's going to bite you. And monsters have got no qualms about cutting people open as obscene, as disgusting as it is. These people are monsters. That's the reality of South Africa. You can't now point the finger at, the, at what you caused and say, look at it. Nobody's taking responsibility here. 
The agency is not taking responsibility. The Afrikaner community is not taking responsibility. And they should take responsibility because by and large, 99% of the time, they were the root cause of this problem. And they need to be big and adult enough to say, hold on, you know what? We actually caused this thing. They actually caused this thing. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Of course I do. Have you? Of course I do. Say what? I said, of course I do. Of course I do. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever read, you know, I have an interest in, I have an interest in, 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 in uh, serial killers. Just a little side interest. Do you know that out of every single profile and studied serial killer in America, only one wasn't abused as a child? Uh, and who would you be referring to? Because I do know that uh, I have, I've, it's interesting you bring this up because I too have, have looked into uh, serial killers. In fact, I've done yeah. some research on it. I know Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was abused. Uh, Ted yeah. Ted Bundy was not abused. He he was just addicted to pornography. Yeah. Um, Bundy Bundy was the only one that wasn't abused as a child. Okay, I thought you were saying uh, who who was abused. I'm like. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying. Ted Bundy out of right. all so are, of, of those. So in other words, the point is, here we yeah, have, point is, folks, yep, look, they're acting on, they're acting out how they were treated. They're acting on that aggression and, and frustration. I fully understand that. And sir, no matter what, this is with all due respect to everybody, I say the savagery and the fucking nonsense needs to stop in a diplomatic way. As you said, sir, somebody needs to stand up Take, take, uh, 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 well, what the fuck's the word? Take, uh, um, uh, oh, ownership the problem. to what, is, yes. what has happened and fix this in a diplomatic session because, as I think we can all agree, history can and will repeat itself. And it's just exactly. going to continue savagely onward and onward. But if you go back to my original, my original statement, I said, if we do not understand history, we will be doomed to repeat yes. it. See, and that's that, exactly what I said, right? And, and so, yep, so, so, I, so when you understand my position, my position is not of I'm bitching, hey, white people this, white people that. No, 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 no. I'm saying as a big grown, I said I'm a wild person. I've spent the, the last 11 years making myself a very wild person, given the fact that I understood my history and thereby and there through understanding what was done to me intergenerationally. And I chose to fix myself. I'm perhaps fortunate in that. I'm perhaps very I, fortunate in that, that I could do that. I have to say, sir, yeah, I wasn't quite sure how this was going to go, this debate, and I have to say that um, you mo both make very valid points, and I agree with you more, sir, than I disagree with you, quite honestly. I mean, I think you're bringing up very valid points, and the base of the thing is, like you said, you need to remove yourself from the unwell situation. You need to fix what started this. Somebody needs to take ownership. And Correct. Fix it the right way. Fix it the right way. Stop killing and murdering people. Nobody deserves to die unless you know. Unless you're defending yourself against irrespective, the murder, irrespective of how those people got to that place, yes. there is no justifiable reason. There is no justifiable argument that can say that somebody can come and boil a child. I'm a parent. Agreed. For fuck's sake. If somebody Absolutely. comes, I don't care if you're white or black, but that that child does not deserve that kind of treatment. From anybody, it is right. condemnable. It is completely unacceptable. Right, and I agree too. It, it's 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 no longer when you cross a thir certain threshold. It's no longer about race. It's about humanity, and morals, true. ethics. It's how dare. But at the same time, that should. This is a cry for help. This is a situation that we find ourselves in in South Africa, where women are being raped three hundred percent more than anywhere else in the world. There's a problem. And and we this and this is for all white people. I'm, yeah, I'm tired of that. Let us go and fix whatever our problem is. We need to fix this fucking thing. As simple Amen. as that. Yes, most definitely. But uh, I really hate to say this, but we are just about out of time, and I have oh, to. Shit. I have to work in the morning. Mr. Freeze, I do apologize. I, I didn't give you a mu much of a chance to speak till the no, last minute. Good. I was absolutely... One thing I can afford to pay in this world is attention, and I was paying attention to what was being said. <laughs> and it, 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 it's sitting in me. And then uh, I, in my personal opinion, uh, would like to invite this gentleman back and, and see... You know, I mean, I would... If it's okay with you, you're the main guy, but I think to, yeah. to finish up and to keep going... Uh, um, 
Why not work together? Why, why, why bitch and gripe at each other about what's problem? A real man fixes what's in front of him. He doesn't bitch about what's bothering him. Exactly. So, so you know what? You know, you know what I'm saying? Let's join hands. Mr. Let's Pete. join hands. White folks ain't going nowhere. <laughs> white folk ain't what's going that? nowhere. Black, white folk ain't going nowhere. Black folk ain't going nowhere. So you know what? If that is the case, then let's just deal with our shit. There we go. There we go. Yep. yep. All right. Well, uh, I mean, just just one thing I want to I want to um, get on before uh, we go though is uh, you know the uh, recent article that was posted by the citizen. I w I want to say this. I am actually a part of that Discord group. Yeah, we know. And <laughs> and I'm going to say this. You know. The things that were posted in that article that I have seen on the article I did not see in the Discord group. I now I could be wrong. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that uh, the article is a hundred percent wrong. But the things I saw in the article are the, are things I did not see in the Discord channel, and I want to make that clear. And also, um, you know, a lot of people are putting the pressure on Willem Petzer uh, mainly because he's holding up Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. Oh, uh, yeah, but here's the thing, though. I would read that book myself, too, especially if I was living in South Africa. I read Mein Kampf in 1967. <laughs> so I would read it because... Yeah, no, I, I, because I, I'm a black guy, so I, I can read it. <laughs> <laughs> but <little shit. laughs> but uh, here's the thing you have to know your enemy and uh, you know you have uh, Brian one thing I, I can commend you for is you know you have not fully endorsed like uh, the, the ANC or the EFF and you can disagree with me all you want on what I'm about to say but if anybody's acting like Adolf Hitler right now it's Julius Malema and with with him trying to run things it, that's a good reason to read that book to to know what to be prepared for uh that but i'm not going to say just because he's holding that book that makes him a neo-nazi no with, with what what he says and what i've heard him say in the research i've done he is making this more about race he's putting that up front is what he is i think is an excuse i disagree with any race thing as we all do i believe we all do fuck what color you are we all bleed the same there we go. The, but the bottom line is this. the problem. Julius Malema is is an opportunist, and he's a political economic op. Now, if things swing in a different direction, he will sing a different song. It's as simple as yes. that. He's he he's a political go, yes, He will go with where the wind blows, and it, yes, exactly. He's a political yes. yes. And that's that's and and I'm on record. If you want to go through my Facebook Facebook page, you can go back years and you'll see what I say about him. <laughs> I take it it must not have been very nice. I, I'm not a fan of Julius Malema at all. Okay. I've said I have to say, sir, I really, like I said, I didn't know how this was going to go, but I, I side with you <laughs> way more. I, I, I mean, I think we're on the same page. Maybe not in the exact same sentence or paragraph, but we're on the same page with this ship. So, please, yes. everybody, let's let's join hands and fix this the right way. Yes. Well, it is definitely time to uh, to wrap this up, uh, Brian. I want to thank you very much for um, for for joining us, uh, especially at this time. Um, the archive, I will say right up front, will not be available right away. It'll uh, this is going to be replayed next Saturday, of course, for the uh, live listeners of Outlaw Radio um, who listen at the normal time. But, uh, Brian, I want to thank you for agreeing. I don't know if we could really call this a, a debate because we did agree on a lot of things. You know, I mean, there, yeah. there, there's a lot of things. No, but that's what a debate. You know what? This is why I call for a debate with Willem Petzer. This is why I call for a debate with Ernst Roots. To say, you know what, guys? You don't have to lie about this shit. Because when you lie and you get it caught out, you create a particular perception about yourself. And this perception is what they're suff suffering from right now. The fact that he holds up a mind cup, people say, aha, we know who you are. You're a fucking Nazi. You're a neo-Nazi neo piece of shit. So had they come out, had they said, you know what? Okay, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'm wrong about lying about uh, um, the war slavery in South Africa. Uh, I'm, you know, I was wrong about uh, there was, you know, so I'm going, I'm going through history point by point to what he's saying and, and giving a rebut on everything he said. Now, do I hate Willem Petzer? I don't have time 
I don't have time in my life for the Lampetsa. We've yep. got a problem in yep. South Africa. I am prepared to take responsibility for my community and all the failings of my own community. I'm prepared to take responsibility for that. In fact, yeah, I will say this publicly. I take responsibility for what my people do. Okay? I'm big enough to say that. And I'm big enough to say that I want to work together with my people to fix it. My, my, child, my child has been a, 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 a heroin addict since the age of 19. She was raped. Oh, yeah, She's been a heroin addict for 19 years of her life. Okay? And I've taken her to, to rehab seven times, da 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 da. My ex wife was a, was a meth addict. So oh. I understand so, what, what this is all about. Nobody in my community can ever say with a straight face that we don't know. Some, some fucker that was a, a child rapist or a rapist or some fucker that, 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 that's not on drugs. So this is a massive problem we're faced with. So we can go on like children and bash each other all we want. But I'm saying we need to stop and fix this. However it must be fixed, let us fix it. Otherwise, it's just gonna, this is only going to get worse. There, 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 is no, there is no nice outcome to this. Yeah. Right. Oh, one other thing. May I point out quick? Billy, I know you want to go, but I'm going to say yes, this too. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Brian, when you were, you were saying about um, earlier, uh, a while back, um, uh, something to the effect about how um, people should share the land. I agree. I agree. I'm tired of the capitalistic bullshit. I'm tired of people wanting to own shit. I'm tired of people, oh, I have more money than you, so you're going to get fucking squashed. Everybody should share. It should be a unified community. It takes a village to survive, not an individual. Oh, I think okay, even see. in the United States, everywhere, fuck these pieces of shit in the United States that want to take everything. And wherever, in any country. Work together, please. Live together. Be unified. Be happy. Live off the land. Share your resources. Stop taking from one another. And I don't but think this, this is a debate. This is I think exactly this is a step point. in the right direction. I disagree with the concept of individual and private land ownership. I disagree That's with the what? concept. I do 100 percent. Yes. I I don't I don't know about that. That's that's where I I differ. I mean, but uh, Billy, if you that's the beautiful thing about being alive and being human that we can disagree. There's nothing wrong, but I, you don't have to hate me or I hate you because we disagree with each other. Yeah. What the fuck? Can you imagine us all living in La La Land? We all agree, uh, playing our little mm -hmm. flutes, floating oh, on clouds, and things on our back. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. It's human to disagree. Yes, that's true. That is very true. But. Uh, so you and I have something to talk about disagreeing then, Billy. Oh, yeah. Because I say we all share it. Here, this is coming from somebody whose parents own land, who owns a ranch. It's an internal debate. You know what I mean? Guys. I, yeah, yeah, no, we'll get it. I, mean, <laughs> I love you. Thank you. I love you both. <laughs> I really do. From a human point of view, uh, 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 I give love in, in, in thanks and prayers. Right. Thank you. Both of uh, you guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, Brian, uh, yeah, if you if you like, uh, just to to wrap it up, if you want to give yourself a plug where the people can find you on social media and the the resources uh, you provided, go ahead. Okay, uh, f first of all, thank you very very much, Billy. Uh, you're not as bad as you uh, as you claim, Billy. <laughs> but I, I appreciate I appreciate the platform because what we need, what we need to do is to share more. I'm an asshole. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, share more and fight less. Uh, and I think that's the way we can resolve our problems. I, have, I, I run a couple of things. I have a, a Facebook page. I have a, um, I have a, a page on um, a, a site on, on YouTube where I have a number of videos where I talk about Egyptians and I talk about Yoruba people. I talk about African history, etc. etc. I run a, a, Khoisan, a Khoisan lecture course. I have a Khoisan lecture group on Facebook as well. People are more than free to apply to, to, to join that. But I mean, this is my contribution to, to who we are as, as human beings, to who we are as Africans. Um, I'm a proud African. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm proud to be an African. Um, uh, that doesn't imply that I, I want to reduce anybody else in, in that process. Right. So that is who I am. And I, once again, thank you very much for the platform. It's been fantastic chatting to both of you, although albeit uh, very in a very limited way with with Mr. Freeze, and I hope that next time we can have more uh, uh, interactive session, including yourself. So thank you very much. All right, and uh, th thank you guys. Uh, shout out to those uh, the the listener base on 
iVlog TV came out pretty high. I'd, I can never calculate who uh, listens on the No Holds Barred Radio Network, but thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, again, Brian, thank you very much. It's my pleasure, sir. Have an awesome day. And from, from the beating heart of Africa up here in Nigeria, I want to thank, thank you all. All right. Have a, okay. have a splendid day. Cheers. Thank all you, right. guys. Love and prayers to everybody. Thank you. All right. Cheers. So with that said, we're going to uh, end uh, this segment uh, the way we always do. Thank you very much for tuning in. This will re- be replayed Saturday. So, um, nice. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Freeze, for staying up as late as you did. It, it, it is time for me to get to bed because I, I have to be to work in the morning. So. Uh, well, see, I, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm lucky being off work because of surgery, but <laughs> either way, I, I, I could sleep in if I want till 8 o'clock. All right. All right, buddy. You have a great night, man, and then, uh, yeah, we'll talk later, bro. All right. We'll be back Saturday. Right. Take care. Later. You have been listening to Outlaw Radio. Be sure to leave your feedback by calling 773-572-7878. All feedback is played and replied to on the show. Visit our official website at outlawradioabs.com. Outlaw Radio is a presentation of AOW Productions.